Today, we're taking a look at the ASICS Meta Ride after 100 miles. Eight point one six miles, nine minutes, twenty one seconds per mile today. Getting in some nice active recovery miles in the ASICS Meta Ride, and with today's run, I'm over the one hundred mile mark in this very unique shoe. It's got a thirty one millimeter stack height with two layers of flight foam. One is softer, one is harder to give you both cushioning but also responsive together. And there's also a layer of ASICS gel that separates the two layers to create a softer landing zone for you. Uh, it's got a rocker in the forefoot as well. So even though this is a zero heel drop shoe, it doesn't feel that way because of the rocker. And uh, it's got a very nice upper. I really enjoyed the upper on this shoe and a well cushioned heel collar, uh, lots of padding all around the parts that touch your ankle. And then they've got the Meta Clutch, I believe they call it, this huge plastic cage that's on the back of the heel to keep your foot all locked down. And the most kind of visible, I guess there's a lot of visible features on this shoe, uh, is these like du dual channel system. There's one kind of channel that goes down the center of the foot and exits out kind of like in an exhaust pipe fashion out the back. And then there's a channel that goes through the shoe this way as well, creating what's essentially like a plus pattern. But it's been a peculiar shoe, and it was a peculiar shoe when I did my kind of initial thoughts after about 20 miles in it. Uh, and it's still a peculiar shoe now. Uh, it's been holding up well though over the miles. Uh, I've run in this shoe from distances between usually a little bit more than six miles to up to about I think 11 miles was the longest run I had in this shoe. Over time it's kind of grown on me. I, I like the shoe and as I've been ramping up the miles as part of my marathon training recently, uh, every time I put my foot into it I've been really appreciating uh, the foam that's around the heel collar it basically feels like memory foam is in here. So it's not just regular padding. It's a little bit different than that, which is something I didn't, I guess, appreciate when I first tried on the shoe. Uh, but I think now that my legs are taking a little bit more of a beating, they're definitely enjoying being in this. And especially the very padded uh, tongue also has been very welcome in terms of when I'm reaching for a recovery shoe. So I've been enjoying it in that regard. But it's still overall just a really confusing shoe, mainly because of uh, the amount of engineering that's going on in this. There's just a lot going on here. Uh, and the purchase price, $250 for a recovery shoe, just those are two things that just don't seem to go together in my mind. Uh, and so I've been spending a lot of time thinking, well, maybe I'm misreading the shoe. So I've also taken it on not just recovery runs where I'm running, pretty much as slow as possible, but also at medium pace runs as well. So I've gone on some runs where uh, I'm in like the eight minutes to eight minutes, 30 seconds per mile, which is kind of a moderate pace. Like if I just kind of go out and run for a while, that's kind of the speeds that I'm gonna be running at. And trying that in this shoe, uh, it, it for me, it seems to take a little bit more effort than in any other shoe. Maybe it's because of the weight, maybe it's because of the, the mechanics of the shoe. Um, it has a very specific idea of what your foot strike should be. And uh, it, it reminded me in a lot of respects to the uh, Brooks Ghost 11 GTX that I ran in for a little bit this last winter where I found myself constantly fighting that shoe. Like my foot wanted to do one thing, but the shoe was telling me to do something else. I got that not as quite to a drastic of an extent as with the Brooks Ghost 11, but I definitely got that with this shoe as well. It made my foot strike change as I was running with this shoe. So I think I hit more of a midfoot 
in terms of my foot strike. But with this shoe, for the kinds of run that I was running with them in, and my recovery runs, uh, and just in the mechanics of what kind of this shoe wants you to do, you're landing more towards the back, towards your heel which makes sense because they've really engineered the heel area and they want this zone to be a lot softer for you to land and then you're supposed to have a smoother transition through the entire kind of length of the shoe as it's touching the ground all the way through the rocker and it's supposed to kind of propel you forward. The ultimate thing that they're calling this is a guide sole and so it kind of gives you more idea of what they want you to think of and what they want this thing to do is guiding you as your foot touches the ground through your entire stride. And this shock absorbent landing zone back here uh, is supposed to lessen fatigue as you're running. And the overall promise that they make is that your leg muscles are going to work less because this part here is soft and it's stiff in the forefoot, which it certainly is. Uh, stiff, it's supposed to lessen fatigue and also make your muscles work less. That's quite a promise. And I'm not sure that this delivers on the full breadth of what that kind of promise really means. I did get a lot of longer miles in this shoe and they felt pretty good. But the, the cost of all this like technology and this comfort and this lock-in and uh, everything that's going on here is a shoe that's heavy. Now the listed weight is 10.8 ounces, which is on the heavier side, but doesn't seem unduly or, or crazily heavy. But the way that the shoe is weighted, it feels heavy. It feels heavy in hand. It feels heavy on foot. Uh, and so it seemed like I'm not sure I would ever pay $250 for the shoe. In terms of full disclosures, I'm sorry, I forgot to put it at the way front, which I normally like to do. This is a shoe that was sent to me for review purposes, so I didn't pay for this shoe myself, uh, but no one is paying me to make this video, uh, and no one even knows that this video is coming out. I think some of you have kind of figured out that this video is coming, uh, but none of the people that were involved in sending me this shoe know that this video is coming, nor will they have any editorial control. They won't get a chance to see it until you guys uh, get to see it on YouTube. Uh, so with the disclosures aside, um, it, the shoe has just been hard to kind of, I can't imagine spending me spending $250 on this shoe uh, for the uses that I've used it for. And maybe I'm misreading the shoe and if you guys have the shoe and you've been loving it for faster runs, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about that and what other shoes you normally run in just to get a comparison point. But anytime that I've really tried to get on my toes on this shoe, I don't really feel like the shoe liked it. Maybe it's good for running fast, but not in the way that my foot hits the ground when I try to run fast. Cause I think this guide sole and everything it's doing, um, could really suit someone well, but that someone is, isn't me. And so that's kind of my ultimate take on it. Another like peculiar side note that I don't think this is going to be consistent with everyone else's experience, but every time I put this shoe on, I just got absolutely drenched. It's springtime. The seasons are changing from winter to spring here in Chicago, uh, especially over the time that I was running in this shoe. And so with that, there's usually lots of winds and the winds create waves along Lake Michigan where I normally run. And there's just been tons of water. But every time I put this shoe in, I just get drenched by waves, some that were up as high as my knees, others that just kind of splash me around a little bit, but it's I've been getting wet on a regular basis in this shoe. And maybe that's kind of contributing to like the heaviness that I'm feeling is literal extra weight of water that's in the shoe. But to the extent that I've been getting the shoe wet, it's still been holding up well. The upper has been just absolutely fantastic in terms of letting water out once it's already in the shoe. Uh, I find the upper to be really breathable and the shoe to be fairly well ventilated in terms of temperature, especially considering how much of this kind of like memory foam like material uh, and this padding is all over the tongue. So the upper, I just think the upper is absolutely fantastic. I think they've done a fantastic job with it in terms of the materials and the design. I really love the upper. It's just the rest of the shoe that just really confuses me. Um, having just I still just have a really hard time figuring out who's buying this at $250. Uh, 
Um, the other thing that I will note is this area right here where these channels are. Every time I wear this shoe, people always ask me, uh, do rocks get stuck in here? And yes, rocks do get stuck in here. I don't feel it when I'm running, but I'll come back from a run and after the run, uh, I'll look down in here and I'll have to like dig uh, a rock out. It hasn't happened. There's been two really notable like big rocks uh, that has happened with. So it's not uh, a super common occurrence, but yes, rocks have gotten stuck in there. Uh, but those are pretty much my thoughts. It's a, a, a surprisingly good shoe. At first, when I first had it, it was weird. I didn't quite get it. I didn't know who it was for or what I was supposed to do with it. As I started to put more miles on it, it became clear to me that it's kind of like uh, when you're trying to build those weekly miles and get that mileage base up and log the miles without injury. Uh, I think that those things uh, can be done in this shoe and I have enjoyed it certainly for my recovery runs, but ultimately it always all just circles back to that $250 purchase price. And for that price, there's a lot of other shoes that I think could kind of fit into that category uh, that I would enjoy a little bit more than this one. But if you're someone who has more of a heel toe foot strike, uh, I think that this shoe might be good for you, not only for your slower and your moderate days, but maybe even your faster days as well. If you are a heel to toe striker and you've been running in this shoe, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear more from you guys uh, down there. Uh, but before I go, I do wanna remind you guys about the charity run for the week. This week, it's Abrielle Schefflers. She's running the London Marathon in just a couple of weeks, and she's raising money for Oasis. And Oasis is an organization that empowers Southeast Asian women migrants who have been affected by gender-based violence or exploitation. Uh, and I've been very happy to donate 70 pounds to Abrielle's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today's video. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?